Now, welcome back to my channel, Little Bob's Garage. Uh, this is the second video, I guess, of I guess a series of, of videos I'm doing my, uh, or I shouldn't say a series of, of two parts. Um, first part I did was uh, the front brakes on my 2015 Volkswagen Jetta. I can go back and take a look at that. I'll probably put a link to it, but uh, the brakes were in a much worse shape than I, than I thought. And I kind of got surprised when I went in there. And the issue was, um, excessive corrosion and it's really from the northeast area where in the when the car sits for a bit even overnight the you'll get surface rust in the caliper and uh, especially in the spring and the fall when it's really humid and I do a lot of highway driveway so I don't really even touch the brakes uh, other than to come to a couple stops along the way pretty much a straight through pass so it doesn't get a chance for scraping off a lot of paint so you showed how bad my front brakes were well now I'm going to the rear of the car to do the rear brakes and uh, a little bit darker in here I'll have to set up some extra lighting but you can see they're equally as bad I don't know if you can make out that but it looks like somebody just took a hammer to this you can see in these ones the coating is still somewhat there but again just corrosion so I'm going to take you through taking these apart um, again, I'm using uh, Brembo brakes. I'm not being sponsored. Just had good results when I uh, put them in our last car, another German car. So I'm going to uh, try it here. The only real difference between the front and the back, they're generally mounted the same way. The rear brakes have a built-in um, emergency brake system. So it's a little strange. Inside the caliper, um, the piston actually rotates, I should say there's a screw inside that every time you depress the, uh, or pull the, the, the rear parking brake, it turns that screw uh, to lock the rear brake and also it advances. It's like, uh, it's like an adjuster for a drum brake. So when you push uh, the caliper back in and again, the proper way to do this is you open the bleeder and you let the fluid out. Um, but uh, you know, frankly, I've been doing it this way with, uh, for a while, haven't had a problem. That's not the right attitude. But anyways, I, I just push the, the caliper back in. But on these, you have to push a little bit, gently push, and you've got to turn the caliper. Or turn the piston of the caliper. So you'll see when you get it apart, there's a little slot built into the piston when I pull the, the shoes off and you you just push in a little gently don't force it turn a little bit and keep doing it it's a tedious thing but it's the only way to get on but the same thing two bolts for the pins for the caliper to slide back and forth there's a mounting bracket here that's got a couple big bolts just like the front and then another Torx type screw on the front for taking the disc off um, and like I said, I'll clean things up a little bit, do the same sort of things, pay attention to the slides. I'll take it apart and take a closer look at it um, and just uh, make sure it's as free as possible. I went to that in a fair bit of detail in the first video. And really it's to ensure the brakes, the caliper slides back and forth on the track. And it's to make sure you have equal clamping force that you're applying as much pressure. So when you start having corrosion like this and the guides and the pins start getting stuck, the pedal becomes hard. So we'll take a look at that when we get these apart. I'll try to get you a bit closer here. So right here and right down below are the two mounting bolts for the caliper. And then right over there is, right, I tip my finger there, are the two mounting bolts for the caliper mounting brackets. Now it's what's called a triple square. What it is is uh, literally, you know, four squares rotated. So it's a, a whatever that is, a 12 point um, like Allen key. So I'll show you that a bit closer. So a little bit of a specialty tool. Unfortunately, like I said, they didn't use the same size or same type of bolts, front and rear, and entirely different on the back. So let's get started on the removal. I'm gonna put you on uh, 
time lapse and take you through because it's pretty straightforward. Okay, brought the parts out in the sun. This one looks like I've replaced these as well. Like I said, my memory's poor, but uh, they got a little bit more material on them. Um, same thing, these are the slides. You can see that there's a shiny spot. That's where the brake was sitting a little bit. And uh, the, the rotors, well, that is just absolutely terrible. So if I was to chip away at that, that would come off in flakes. That's basically iron, iron oxide, cast iron, and it um, glazes over. Here's the back side. So you can see, same thing, a little bit of contact in the middle, but you can see these flakes coming off. This builds up and forms this crust. And instead of being flat on the, on the, um, on the raw casting, so it cuts back on the power. Like I said, I probably, you know, they're, they're not gouged on this side. Uh, no, can't tell for this, but they are totally toast. And you can still see the coating on there. So I don't quite get it, how fast they corrode. And, it, and it's typically been that way, and it's just the nature of my drive. I've got about a, an hour long drive, and it's all highway. I probably have to only touch the brakes about four or five times. So I think it's just not really cleaning them off well enough. So same thing, all this is garbage, of course. And I'm gonna spend a bit of time doing the same thing I did in the last video. I'm gonna clean, knock all the scale off, and I'm gonna make sure these um, are nice and square and clean, no flakes. So the new brake pads, the new brake pads are gonna slide back and forth. And I'll just try it out a little bit. I won't show you the details, um, you saw what I had before, um, used chisels, uh, wire wheel brushes, um, I've even used in the last video, because it was so heavy, I even used a uh, pneumatic hammer, set really lightly, just a tap, and knock the stuff off. I'll bring it back when it's done. Okay, so here's, after spending about 10-15 minutes cleaning up, so you can see right there and right there a low spot so this is the the pad just basically sitting in one area for a while rattling around which it's going to do um, but probably more likely got stuck in that area the rear brakes weren't working as well but that wore out so basically even though these calipers might be working okay I don't know if I can get the cars, by the way, for information. The car's got 250,000 kilometers. So that's like 100, uh, you, know, you know, almost 150, 180,000 miles on it. But what I'm going to likely have to do is next time I'm going to have to replace the calipers. Not because calipers aren't working, but because... I'm going to eventually get the caliper hung up or the pad hung up in that area. Can't go down too far because when you take this down, you're lowering the pad relative to the rotor. Probably enough room there. This side, you can see a little bit there, not so much there. But like I said, it's it's got a it's got a a divot there, and I can't do much about that. I suppose I could weld all that up, but that's kind of ridiculous for the price of these. Okay, so next thing to do is clean them up and start assembling. So I apologize for the voiceover. I somehow lost the outer. I probably didn't turn the, uh, the mic on or whatever. So what I'm trying to show here is um, the piston itself that you've got to compress the piston and the caliper. So it's just a close up. What I used is um, uh, just a ca uh, piston, caliper piston compressing tool you can see here that I apply a little bit of pressure to the face of, of the piston. And uh, you can see the slots in the, in the face of the piston. Uh, those you used, uh, used to rotate the piston, turn it in clockwise. 
and at the same time, I apply a bit of pressure. What I found is I'm alternating before uh, applying the pressure and then uh, turning at the same time. It's tedious. Pretty uneventful. Um, the uh, brakes came with a anti rattle um, clip, uh, so it goes. I put it over this top slide, and the reason for that was because that's the one that had a little bit of pitting. It kind of makes sense too. The wheels turn this way, so it's always being uh, pressure being applied on this side. So this is going to probably be the loose end because there is a bit of clearance back and forth. The only other thing is that I mentioned earlier, the pins, one was uh, right seized. Uh, I apologize also for the uh, fluttering of the image. I shouldn't realize I've seen that in other videos, it's the frequency of the LED lights and the camera. I'll try to correct that with the speed in the next one. Um, so anyways, the one pin was seized. It wouldn't move anything. So this brake was really, there was hardly any force being applied at all. So I cleaned it out, cleaned the pin off, uh, the bore, this, this is the pin here, and then a nut secures it. Um, I put a wire brush down inside, cleaned out the bore, cleaned off, and what happened is it, uh, the lubricant turned to like charcoal, if you like, a real thick, dryish, um, I'm sure it's, it's burnt uh, uh, grease, but uh, it wouldn't move. Uh, so that, that was all good. I had to get another wrench to hold that um, the pin itself from turning when I was tightening down. But really nothing to it. It's pretty uh, pretty easy. Uh, so that's it. I'm not going to bother going to my, uh, showing you on the other side unless something's a bit of a surprise. One thing to keep in mind is um, everything's bled back. As I said, I compressed the, the, um, the piston and the bore. Not a great thing to do. Should really be uh, purging. But um, everything has got slop in it. Everything's loose. So you gotta remember before you start back up, you know, tap the brake a few times. Now uh, get the brakes seated back on the shoes because if you just drive off and you, uh, and you step on the brakes, the first couple pumps are gonna be taking up the slack. So you gotta make sure you set the pads down before you drive. Yeah, I'm going to finish off the other side and I'll finish up the video. Okay, so both back brakes are all put back together. Uh, got it all cleaned up. Got a little bit more cleaned up. The garage tools put away, but some packaging I put away. So it went pretty good. Um, you know, it's longer than the front brakes because it takes a lot longer. Now, I know there's a tool. Uh, so whoever wants to put something in the comments, I'm aware of that. Uh, but I'm not going to buy that tool. I can get it and it takes longer. So front brakes took about a, an hour per... Uh, Per, uh, per per wheel, and uh, that includes the cleaning of the uh, of the caliper mounting bracket, which is frankly takes the longest, and the cleaning up the slides. Rear is the same, but uh, pushing that piston back and then the uh, calipers took an equally a long amount of time, so probably about an hour and a half per side. Anyhow, it definitely needed it. I'd let that go way too long. Um, and again, as a reminder, you know, if you ever do brake work like this. Um, step on the brake pedal a few times before you start going anywhere to get the uh, piston pushed back into position to take up any slack. So I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comment section if I've given too much detail, not enough detail. Um, the next thing I'm going to be doing on the Jetta is going to be a, an alignment. I, when I put the struts in, um, there, the, uh, there's not much that you can do other than the toe in. Um, but because the top of the strut was slightly different position, it's a little off. So I'm going to do a little bit of a, um, a garage alignment first to show you how I do that. And I'm still going to take it in, but at least get it a little bit uh, straighter until the car gets into the garage. So I hope you enjoy this. 
uh, and keep an eye out for future videos. And I got one coming up on the Harley Davidson where I'm changing um, jet sizes just to try it to see how that improves performance. Thanks for watching.